Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a really cool video where I'm going to show you how you can set up a model context protocol server on your own machine and then link it into Claude Desktop. So if you're not using Claude, same kind of principles will apply. You're just going to slightly change, you know, kind of the endpoint of how you're interacting with it. Um, so that you have a way to have your AI and your chatbots to actually interact in AI agents as well, interact with any kind of external source. So you can see in this you know, quick little diagram, throw up as an example, basically you, know, you can now have a AI agent that runs on your desktop, and I've been doing this a lot, that can then call out and access other files within your file system. It can go access your GitHub, can pull data, you know, messages from Slack, uh, and basically interact with any kind of external service which previously was a big sticking point for you know AI agents is you needed to feed them all the information within the request. Um, you know some could do deep research, but they couldn't really interact with other services. Now you can have authentication built in, um, so that you can even have your AI agent interact with secure services and get the data from there. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. We're going to show you practically how to set up a model context protocol on your own machine link it into Claude, and then start using it for a few different use cases to give you an idea of the possibilities that it unlocks. Um, so if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, consider joining my Patreon, it helps me out immensely. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do, we need to do here is pop open terminal um, and check for a couple of packages too that we need to have installed. Um, first is going to be Node, so just make sure you have Node installed, so just checking my Node version here. And then also make sure you have NPM installed, Node Package Manager. Um, that's just basically what you need to have any kind of AI agent run your own machine. Um, and then also make sure you have Claude code installed globally. Um, so here, just installing uh, Claude co code globally. It might take a little longer. I already had it installed. Um, and then what you're going to do is just quickly verify that you know, your actual Claude was installed. So just run Claude version cool, we have a Claude version installed. Um, and then what we're gonna do is create a new project directory. So let's go to let's see, make directory MCP server, CD into there, and then boom. So now what we're gonna do is start, and now what we're gonna do is run Claude. And what this will do is then prompt, and I'm already logged in, um, but if you're not already logged in, it will either open your browser or prompt you to enter an Anthropic API key. Um, so now we have Claude running on our machine. So next thing we're going to do is actually just run, create a simple MCP server. Um, so here we're just going to create a new terminal window here. And then we're going to make directory my C MCP server. Or actually, we already created that directory. What am I doing? Um, so here, let's open this here. And oops, MCP server. Cool. Open this in. Now we're in our nice little new repo. And I'm just going to run Claude again, make sure it's running here. Cool. We're running in my MCP server directory. And then what we'll do is create a virtual environment. Um, so here we're going to create a Python virtual environment, and then we're going to install a very simple MCP server. Um, so this is just very basic. It's honestly not super, oops, sorry, context cancel there. And then I just added a unnecessary little slash at the end. So run this. You'll see now we have created a virtu Python virtual environment. Um, and then what we're going to do is install MCP SDK. Um, so the MCP SDK is just a Python, very lightweight MCP server. Um, you can see we're just going to download it here. Boom, boom, boom. And then what we'll do is create a new, so within this virtual environment, so we have this include. And then so what we'll do is create a new file. Um, so clear this, and then new file, call this server.py to actually initialize our MCP server. So here, first thing we need to do is just import from fastmcp, fastmcp, and then initialize that MCP server. Um, and then we're going to set, create one function just called get current time. That's going to use an MCP tool. Um, and so MCP is basically just a very basic, lightweight, Python compatible MCP server. It's not gonna do a lot of things special, but what it'll do is basically you can assign it tasks like, hey, get the current date or calculate the sum of two numbers, 
get basic info, and then these are basically functions that you know are mimicking actual services. So in real life, you wouldn't be having such simple MCP protocols. You would really have you know these each of these tools would be something like, hey, I actually want to go interact with GitHub and do some GitHub action. Um, and so once I've gotten this done, then what I can do is then we're going to create a bash script that can actually run this Python file on command. Um, so what we'll do here is create a run script, run server sh. So we're just going to run these commands. So go to bin bash, cd, go to the merge environment, and then create a server, uh, python server.py. And then, so second do is, let's see, here in one moment. Sorry, I was being a little bit silly and I shouldn't have been putting it in the terminal. I need to create an actual run script. So here we're gonna create a run script called run server, run server.sh. So run server.sh, cool. And then what we'll do is use all the same commands we just had. So bin bash, all those fun things. And then what we will do is make it executable. So here, chmod plus x run and I'm sorry I gotta run this from terminal this one so where is it there we go cool so now we have an executable server.sh file and then what we can do is use the claude mcp command to add this server to uh, claude code so, so here we're gonna run this Claude MCP add my server and then the full path to wherever your server bash script is located. And then what this will do is add you that MCP server and that script we just created to your Claude code environment. And um, so now you have your MCP server available to run within Claude. Um, and so what we can do now to verify that that actually occurred is to run Claude MCP list and you can see we have my server and then that run server ex executable file. Um, and so then if I check available tools, you'll see run slash MCP, you will see, oh, in a Claude code session. So one second, MCP, you can see I have my MCP server. And then if I hit enter, it'll actually show me the tools I have. And then I can press one and you'll see I can run get current time, calculate some or get some info. Um, and so here you can see, hey, if I'm passing in, you know, four and five, that will then give me nine as the combination, right? So here we can see all of our tools. And then if you add any tools to this server.py file, those will then become available within Claude as functions. Um, and so what you could do is say, hey, something like I want to now, if I want to test this um, and go back. So I'm, let's say I want to enter, hey, what is the current time? And what this will do is it then should use my MCP server to get the current time. And you can see there it is actually doing that, right? So now instead of just, you know, going off at its own and trying to figure out the current date time, it has a really easy path to just go, hey, get the current date time. And obviously these are very simple examples, but it's, you know, you can see how you can extend these into more complex processes saying, hey, you know, I want you to generate a message for me and then send it out to all my stakeholders on the progress of, you know, my coding or my AI agents coding for the day, right? Um, and so there's a lot of different ways you can use this to, you know, actually have processes that are useful rather than, you know, just obviously get current time, calculate some, get system infos. It's pretty basic, right? And so, then, you know, if, let's say I want to, you, you want to start extending this out to other locations, right? And let's say I want to add something like a Postgres server, right, to my environment. Then what I would do is I go to create a new terminal window and type in Claude, add data server, and then path to wherever my server is. So this is imagining I'm running a local Postgres server uh, with a database URL and an API key. This, you know, if I had a local Postgres server, would then allow me to run and connect to and then pull data from that Postgres server. Um, and so, you know, you don't need, also need to build all of your own MCP servers. Um, I just wanted to show you how to do it because I think it's really important to understand how to do so. But there's a lot of MCP servers that are already actually out there. Um, so let's say, you know, I want to add file system access, right? Here I have Claude MCP, add file system, and then you can see I, there's already an existing model context protocol for using your local file system, and I'm adding documents and downloads to that. Um, 
Similarly, you know, if I wanted to add something like a GitHub integration right here, right, what I could do is just, hey, hey, GitHub add NPX, um, and then boom. So let me see, let's delete Y here. And boom, so now you have, you know, your GitHub uh, attached, and you know, obviously GitHub is producing this server, and to then just connect with your personal access token, um, and you know, similar thing for Postgres, you could you know, have a server, and there is already a server uh, that exists that you can just use to say, hey, enter information, and boom, use this existing model context protocol rather than developing your own from scratch. Um, so super useful tool for extending the capabilities of any AI agent you might be using. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.